never seen before. We've done the impossible. We've seen your mountains move before. Your word is unstoppable. With expectation, we declare the mountains stand before us. No weapons formed against us. We're standing on your promise. We believe in your love for a range of things. We know that you are willing. We've seen that you are able. Oh, God, release your favor. We believe in your love for a range of things. Renew, restore, revive your church and make us whole. We've seen all mountains moving before. Your word is unstoppable. With expectation, we declare no mountains stand before us. No weapons formed against us. We're standing on your promise. We believe in your Lord for greater things. We know that you are willing. We've seen that you are able.
And we need you right now to move on these situations with Brother Guy, Sister Marilyn's family, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Touch our pastor right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we need you to shake us right now, Father. Shake this nation, God. Lord, strengthen us and move on us in a mighty way, Father. Put your hands upon us, Father God, right now, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're about to do. We ask you to anoint our pastor right now, God. Let him find favor and blessings on his family, Lord, in this service right now, God. And the word he's going to bring us, God. We ask you to touch our musicians right now, Father. Let the anointing fall in our hearts, God. Lord, whatever we've done wrong right now, God, forgive us right now, Lord. He told us about hot, about she told about In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, church, can we worship God one more time right now? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm not sure if everyone's aware that Brother Kent passed away last night. And I think most of you know, but just keep remembering Sister Mary in prayer because um, that's a long time. I think it was 74 years they've been together. 73 years. You know, some of us aren't even that old. 73. Can you imagine being married that many years? And there's many great memories of Brother Kent. I tell you, I was a little bitty girl whenever they came around, and um, they tell all the time they've known me my whole life. But, you know, it is, it's is—it's—it's hard to lose him, but it's especially hard on, on their family. And let's just pray for them as God just comforts them and helps them. God is a great God, and it's wonderful to see someone go home that has loved God his whole life and been faithful to God. He, like I said, was a good man. So let's just remember him. And we're going to worship the Lord in another song, lifting up holy hands unto him and praising him. He's a mighty, worthy God. Amen.
everybody had an awesome fourth yesterday. I know I did. Uh, if we get our ushers, ushers to get ready, I'm going to go through some announcements real quick. Foundations class today has been dismissed. Uh, restart recovery tomorrow, dinner at 6. Class begins at 7. Grounded online Bible studies Thursday nights at 7. Um, Sister Wells had passed it, or mentioned that Brother Kent had passed away. His funeral is this Wednesday at the Bradshaw Funeral Home in Malden. Visitation is 10.30 to 1. Funeral service is at 1.30, and burial will be here in Dexter. Uh, also, uh, during our offering, uh, we're going to take up a special offering donation to Sister Merrill and her family to assist with her uh, mother's funeral expenses. So if y'all want to do that, you can mark it on your tithing envelope or get with Sister Dorothy and give it to her. If y'all repeat after me, repeat with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so blessed. Amen. So blessed to have freedom to worship in the house today. I'm so thankful I can clap my hands. I can sing unto the Lord. I can jump. I can, I can worship. And I'm so thankful for freedom today.
No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Shackles, no more chains, no, no more, more bondage. bondage. I am free. Yeah. Hallelujah! One more time. I said, No, no more, more shackles, no more chains, no, no more bondage. I am free. for the old songs and uh, I'm thankful for the new songs you may be seated it'll take just a minute for us to get everything set up but uh, again go ahead and have a seat but I'm thankful I need the green mic too thank you I need the purple mic where's that thank you all right all right we're gonna let brother Pritt go ahead and testify just a little bit okay the purple one goes in the Well, the Bible speaks about light. Light is important, or else it'd be in darkness. Jesus said, I am the light. That's the one thing you got to remember. He is the light. Yes, he is. The Bible speaks of a light, a light, the word being the light to his path. So we, we, we're going to sing about the light. I, lo I love light.
some of our elders still being willing to be used and and not afraid to use their talent. Brother Pritt has a beautiful voice, and of course your daughter as well. And I guess Richie will say you sing good too. <laughs> I had to tease him a little bit. He's known me since I was a little girl too, so I hope he forgives me for being so silly. But I'm thankful for for God. I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful for our liberty. And I know that things does, doesn't seem certain, but we have a God who has it all in his hands. And we're just going to sing together, America the Beautiful. How many are still thankful? In the midst of all the chaos, aren't you happy to be an American? And don't you want God to continue to bless our USA? We thank you all. If you are, I know that, well, I probably won't point him out, but we're kind of pointing in that direction. But those that are... Um, our veterans, if you can stand, because we want to thank you for all that you've done. Go ahead, Richie. I was pointing at you a little bit. Thank you so much. Let's give them a hand. Thank you for your service. Thank you, God, for our men and women that are willing to fight for our, our beautiful country. Thank you so much. Just worship God and thank him as we sing. Sing it together. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain, America. today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For your freedom. Amen. And I too thank the Lord for our nation. Amen. With all of the, the chaos going on, I'm still thankful that we live in the great United States of America. Amen. And for all those who have served and given the ultimate sacrifice, you and I are beneficiaries of that today. And we are so thankful for that. Amen. Praise God. It is great to be in the house of the Lord today. So good to see each of you uh, this morning. Amen. As we've come out to 
to celebrate the greatest liberty, amen, beyond even our, that of our nation. I'm thankful for the spiritual liberty that God has given all of us today, amen. Praise God. It's so good to see each of you, amen. Good to have Sister Colfer with us this morning. Praise God. I appreciate her, and amen. We are honored that she is able to be here, amen. Praise God. And I, I hear it so often from those who have, I said, man, I, I knew your wife when she was little, and I'm thinking, man, you've known her a long time, because it's been a long time since she was young, amen, praise God. We, uh, we spent our day yesterday, uh, we went to a creek, and uh, man, we just, we just sat in the creek, swam in the creek, cooked by the creek, we tried to catch fish, we didn't, we didn't catch it, I don't know if Riley ended up catching any or not, but amen, we tried catching fish, we just had a great time of being lazy, amen, and uh, uh, anybody enjoy just being lazy when you get a chance to be lazy, praise God, I appreciate that opportunity for sure, amen, but it was a wonderful day, and uh, amen, and we, we, we just celebrate each other, we had a great time, amen, we're so honored to have Jaden this morning, I want him to come forward, he, were, he was baptized in Jesus' name on June the 10th, we want to give him a certificate, Proud of what the Lord's doing and what he is going to continue uh, to do. It's already been mentioned. Keep the, the Kent family in your prayers as uh, Brother Kent did pass away yesterday, last night about a little before 10 o'clock and uh, had a long battle. And those, some of you have been through that and, and it's just a, such a weariness upon everybody. And uh, But he did live a great life and we're going to celebrate that. church we will be getting together a dinner for them um, so but we're going to take it to their house they, they would rather do that so we'll get with everybody concerning those details uh, here in the next couple days amen if you have your bibles with you this morning i'd like to go to the book of nehemiah chapter four amen nehemiah chapter four this is a very special day this is easton's birthday amen he says, amen. He turned seven years old and uh, today. Also, it's my mom's birthday. She also turns seven plus a few years. Amen. Nehemiah chapter number four. And uh, beginning in verse, uh, verse 15, the Bible says, When our enemies heard that it was known to us, and that God had frustrated their plan. How many are thankful when God frustrates the plans of the enemy? <laughs> he said, we all return to the wall, each to his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction, half held spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah, who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that they each labored on the, on the work with one hand and held his weapon with the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built. And the man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. I said to the nobles and to the officials that, and to the rest of the, the people that the work is great and widely spread and we are separated on the wall far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there, our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work. Half of them held spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, Let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem, that they may be a guard for us by night and labor by day. So neither I nor my brothers nor my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon at his right hand. There are some things that are without question worth defending. Amen. There are some fights that are worth fighting. I've I've heard advice uh, given to me over the years that you got to pick your battles. You got to choose which which hill is worth dying on. There are some that are worth that are worth that sacrifice. Amen. I want to for just a few moments this morning. Simply, uh, my title is not on my. 
and we're going to kind of clarify that as we continue further here this morning. But I'm thankful today for those who have gone ahead of us. Amen. The generation like Brother Kent and others that have held true, amen, and loved God and lived a life of great honor. I'm thankful for, because we're here today because of those who have forged that path ahead of us. I'm, I'm grateful for that. But also today, in this hour, there is still a battle to be fought. There is still something that's worth defending. There's still something that's worth standing on. And so you and I together, collectively and individually, have got to declare within ourselves, not on my watch, and you can insert there, devil, because the enemy is attacking, we know that. But today we're going to stand and we're going to fight for that which is worthy of that fight. God, we love you. We thank you this morning. God, for your sweet spirit that we have felt, we're grateful today. Lord, as we have come to get to come together and worship together in freedom. And Lord God, we're, we ask this morning again that you will anoint our minds. Give us understanding. Lord, let the lights, uh, God, the, the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. Uh, and for that, God, we will be thankful uh, and grateful. We ask, Lord, as you'll help us in Jesus' name. Everybody said in Jesus' name. You can be seated for a moment. Hallelujah. Amen. I um, have been in, uh, I've been alive for 45 years. Amen. And uh, 4th of July is probably, it's one of my, I have a lot of great memories concerning the time spent in 4th of July. Of course, you've got the smell of burnt fireworks. That was something that we always enjoyed. Uh, we were never able to get the big ones because those cost too much money. But we got a bunch of firecrackers and bottle rockets and sparklers and those things you throw on the ground and let them explode. I love those snakes that you could that you would like. I love the smell of those snakes. And still yet today, I, I enjoy the smell of those snakes. But it's beyond just the celebration of fireworks and barbecues and gathering together. And again, the memories can go uh, just in depth. But of course, it is what that day represents, and that is the celebration of our independence as a nation. Amen. And I still say this morning in the year of 2020, even with all of the issues that we have as a country, and the Lord knows we have them, amen, but our nation, the United States of America, is still the greatest country in the world. Amen. I have traveled outside of our nation on a few occasions, and when you're out there as a non-citizen in foreign countries, and you see things that, that are, again, they're, they're nice places to visit, but there's just something about when that plane lands on American soil. I always breathe just, I'm just, I'm glad to be home. I am thankful to be an American. Amen. A few months ago when I spent a, about 10 days over in Israel, and again, seeing all the beautiful biblical sites, and, and it, it was a trip of a lifetime, but, but about, about three or four days into it, I was, uh, I, I was enjoying it, I was so glad to be there, but I was missing home. I was missing American food, amen. I was, I was missing just, just again, there's just something about the being an American and, and being able to be, again, we are so blessed and I'm so grateful for it. One of the things that has made our nation great is the principles of which it was built upon. Even though politicians, they come and they go from, from even both sides of the aisle. Yet these principles of freedom always remain. Our declaration declares that we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of, of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. 
and to institute new government, laying its foundation so such principles and organizing its powers of, in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect uh, their safety and their happiness. Uh, amen. We are a nation, of, but we are a nation of individuals. Amen. We live in a world today in a nation that, that gives us certain liberties, the right to speak your mind, I know things can be attacked. I know that there are some very of the, the principles that, that are being attacked, but still yet you have a right to say what you think. Of course, you need to probably think before you say it. Amen. We live in a day of social platforms that people are like, I mean, they, they just, they, they don't think about it. It's obvious. They did not think about what they typed. And, uh, but nevertheless, we have that liberty today to do that. Amen. The reality is this morning that many may not understand or, or comprehend that liberty, and we use that word so freely, uh, liberty and freedom was not as widely supported as you may imagine or think in those original 13 colonies. Amen. Before America became America, when we were 13 colonies that were governed, amen, by Great Britain, the idea of freedom, it sounds good, it feels good, but the, 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 the bringing about of our liberty, it, it, was a, it was a very giant hill to, to be climbed. It was not something that was easily done. Many uh, may be surprised how close we came to not even pursuing freedom. Now, why would we not ever pursue freedom? Amen. The gathering of, of the Continental Congress uh, were always full of debate uh, because everyone understood the sacrifice uh, that was going to be required. Uh, men would lose their lives. Uh, people would lose their possessions. Uh, and many of them were not convinced uh, that they would be able uh, to accomplish uh, freedom. It wasn't that they didn't want freedom. It wasn't that they didn't value freedom. But they were not sure that they would be able to gain their freedom. I'm thankful today that there were 56 men that put their signature on a declaration. 244 years ago yesterday, they gathered at 520 Chestnut Street in Pennsylvania, in a building that we know today as Independence Hall. The enormous 12 by 18 foot oil painting by John Trumbull, it hangs in the U.S. Capitol today. It shows 42 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. Most people can only, amen, they can only realize, or they can only recognize, rather, two of the signers that you see in that picture. Amen. How many do you recognize today? Their history, though, is fascinating. Their devotion to following Scripture was remarkable. Ironically, the two that are probably the most recognized is Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin. Amen. But yet they were the two of the most unreligious of the 56 signers. Today, they are demonized by people who don't understand history. you got to take time to research their stories. You may be surprised what you discover. Did you know that the First Continental Congress had a two-hour prayer meeting and a Bible study before they began the business for our country? Did you know that Thomas Jefferson, again, one of the most more liberal of the founders, started a church in the United States Capitol that lasted for nearly a century? Did you know that in 1803, Thomas Jefferson negotiated a treaty with the, uh, the, the Kaskaskia Indians that included using federal funds to pay a preacher to teach the Indians about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Today, the most liberal founder of our nation would be labeled as a radical far-right extremist. Amen. The principles of the founding of our nation. Our first president, George Washington, he said, It is impossible to govern the world without God. 
It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of God Almighty, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly implore His protection and favor. I am sure there never was a people who had more reason to acknowledge the divine interposition in their affairs than those of the United States. And I should be pained to believe that they have forgotten that agency which so often manifested during the Revolution or that uh, they fail to consider the omnipotence of God who is alone able uh, to protect them. Uh, he must be must be worse than an infidel that lacks faith and more than wicked that, that has not gratitude enough to acknowledge his obligations words spoken so ever truly by our first president amen again we stand here today in a late hour the year of 2020 244 years after the declaration and things have changed and have changed dramatically no doubt amen there are things going on in our world our nation today that that they do concern me greatly but I but still yet amen we're still Americans amen we still have freedom but it's the principles of this freedom that is most important one may ask or, or question what is it that I can do how can I make a difference? And I know you've heard it, and you're going to hear it a whole lot more uh, up until November gets here uh, of the need to make sure you're registered to vote. Every vote counts, and we're going to hear that. And I believe all of that. And that is one way you can make a difference. Amen. But us as an individual, the decisions we make, the actions we have, the, the lives we live, those make the greatest impact. In our reading this morning of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is a... It's a, it's a great story. It's inspiring. Nehemiah was, was just a cupbearer. He, he had been in, uh, amen, in exile in, in Babylon, and, and he was serving the king. And he, 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 he basically, well, he didn't just hand the king his glass, but, but a cupbearer, I mean, it was a very important position. He would make sure the, the wine or the, 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 the drink was not poisoned and but, but he wasn't a hard laborer. But the Bible tells us in the introduction of this story that he had one of his brothers, Hanani, come by and, amen, he said, I, I asked him concerning the Jews that have escaped and who had survived the exile. And he said, I asked about the city of Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who has survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. And he said, the reason is the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates are destroyed by fire. Now the significance of that is that, that a, a city's wall was their protection, it was their security. A city without a wall had, had no stability. Amen. They, they may have been back in Jerusalem, but without a wall being built, uh, that, that city, uh, uh, again, it would be very, very in a very critical condition. Uh, and the Bible tells us, Nehemiah says, as soon as as I heard these words, something gripped Nehemiah's heart. He said, I sat down and I wept and I mourned for days. This was not just something he said, oh, that's, that's too bad. No, something got a hold of Nehemiah. Amen. He wept, he mourned over the condition of, of the city of Jerusalem. Amen. The Bible says that he continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Amen. Nehemiah didn't have experience in building walls. This was not something that he could say, well, I, we've done this before. He had no clue maybe what it would have, what it would take, but all he knew is something got a hold of him. There was a burden in his heart. And we know the story that Nehemiah, God began to open doors and, and God began to give him people in his life that, that would be able to give him instruction. And, and he goes back to Jerusalem and he starts to build the wall around Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Fast forwarding, we find in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, that the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month Elul in 52 days. Now again, if you, when, when I was there in Jerusalem, they, they have a theory that the, the city of Jerusalem, the, the old city where David uh, uh, built the, the Jerusalem, I mean, it, it, was, it was very, very large. And they said, 
I don't know for sure if that the wall it, uh, uh, surrounded the entire city, but then they have the old city, which is still pretty big. So even if it was just the old city, I don't have any pictures here, but but it was still to, to build this wall in 52 days would still be an accomplishment. But honestly, to me, it don't matter how big the city is. Uh, I believe God can enable people to do that which is impossible. I believe God can give people ability that they would never have on their own to do what they never could have done before. Amen. How would it be possible that something like that could happen? Well, first of all, it's God. The Bible says, for with God nothing shall be impossible. We know that. We believe that. But when you really start considering, Nehemiah, how did you accomplish such a task? How, how good were you? Well, when you really see and you understand what they did, the Bible says, and we read it in our text in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 15, when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. That, that, that phrase is very significant, each to his work work. When you look at the big picture, you may think, oh, I could never do that. I could never make a difference in that. I could never accomplish that. But in reality, the collective uh, 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 effort to, with everybody together, each person had a job. Each person was responsible, amen, for the wall that was there directly in front of their dwelling place, amen. It was their job to make sure that that part of the wall was built. Amen. They returned to their work. Each person was responsible for that place so that if everybody does their job, guess what? It's not on the it's not on the shoulders of, of just one person. It's not just one person's responsibility, but it's everybody's responsibility working together, feeling the burden together, allowing God to enable them together. And because of that, they were able to accomplish something that would be absolutely impossible. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so you say this morning, how, how can I make a difference in this, in this hour? How, what, what can I do uh, uh, to help uh, uh, society? I mean, really, uh, when you look at the issues uh, and the problems that we face, uh, it, they can easily be overwhelming. Uh, I know from a minister's point of view or, or standpoint, uh, there's times when I'm wondering, uh, how can I really make a difference? Uh, what, 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 good am I what, what good am I doing? Uh, amen. It's hard sometimes because you don't always see uh, the direct results uh, that you would like to be able to see. Uh, but I've learned this, uh, that it's not about all the results. Uh, amen. Paul said uh, that I come in, uh, I plant uh, Apollos waters, uh, and God gives the increase. Uh, it's not necessarily about uh, the direct results. Uh, but if I will do what God has called me to do, and if you will do what God has called you to do, we as individuals doing our individual jobs and callings and ministries, collectively they make a difference. I believe this morning that even in a small town as Dexter is, and Dexter is a small town, but it's the biggest town I've ever lived in. I hear people talking about being in towns of millions and hundreds of thousands and I'm like, this is the first town I've ever lived in that had its own Walmart. That's a big deal to me. I used to have to travel 40 miles just to go to Walmart. That's horrible now. Now, now, now i got to travel across town, and that's like, oh, I don't want to do that. But, but I remember, no, this is a lot better than it used to be. I just wish Walmart would open up later now, wouldn't you? Can we sign a petition? Can we protest that? Is it okay to protest that? Amen. But I believe in our little in our little city. Amen. That that isn't. People might say, "Well, that's you, know, you, you don't live in a significant city." We're not in Jefferson City, the capital of our of our state. We're not in Washington D.C., the capital of our nation. Let me tell you, friend. I believe the Bible speaks of a city. The Bible calls it a little city, but there was a wise man in that city. But the the enemy had come in and, and had built great bulwarks, great strongholds. But because of the wisdom of that, of that unnamed man, God came in and delivered not just that city, but the surrounding area.
believe God can take us as Dexter citizens or the surrounding region. And your prayers and my prayers, my willingness to say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to allow you to put a burden on my heart. See, we live in a world that just wants to be comfortable. I love comfortable. <laughs> I love that I have an air conditioner in my house. Hey, Amen. I was with a friend of mine this week, and he said, man, we were in, the, we were in my, when my truck, and the air conditioner was just blowing. It was so cold. He's like, oh, I don't like this air conditioner. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, it makes me sleepy. I'm like, go to sleep then. I, don't, don't talk bad about my air conditioner. I love my air conditioner. He said, well, it comes from the fact, he said, I was raised without one. I'm like, oh, you poor guy, I am so sorry. He said, I didn't have one. We never had one. And I thought, how did you survive? I mean, I love being able to go. I do it every night. I mean, we have our set about 69, but at nighttime, I, I push it down to 67. And I love it. I would go even lower than that, but anyway. But I love having that privilege. Aren't, aren't you thankful for comfort? Hey Amen. My friend, my, one of my, my best friend I grew up with, I spent a lot of time in his house. His, his dad had a great job, and, but they didn't have air conditioning. And I, and I thought, oh, why don't you get air conditioned? What, what's wrong with you, right? How many here live without air conditioning when you was growing up? Man, God bless you. I, I love comfort. We live in a world today that, that strives for comfort. But see, the problem with that can be that, that comfort is so nice that it makes discomfort look really, really bad. For instance, if I ever go without air conditioning, I'm, I, I would be so grumpy. But, I, but my point is, there's those that was raised without it. I, I, God, if you need to burden me, if you need to make me not comfortable, that's okay. Why, why would you ever volunteer for something like that? Well, it's because I understand that I've got a wall in front of me I've got to make sure it gets built. I've got a ministry in my life, a calling in my life, that, that I may not be able to control what everybody else is doing, but I know that I can control what this guy... It's my responsibility to make sure I do what I can do. And if that requires some discomfort, then so be it. If that requires, amen, being hedged out of my comfort zone, so be it. Why? Because the collective effort together of each person being willing is going to make a difference. Even in a small town in southeast Missouri... I'm telling you, God can hear our prayers. God can see our burden. God, amen, can respond and not just bless, amen, our city or our region. But I believe your prayers and my prayers can make a difference throughout the state, throughout the nation, and throughout the world. I believe that. I believe that. But it will never happen until you decide... I've got to defend this place right here. I can't control what everybody else is doing or not doing. There's a principle here. Jesus talked about it. He said where, where you may look at your friend and say, I can see the very small speck in your eye and be completely unaware of the beam that resides in my own. So my point here today is it's not, my, it's not really my responsibility to make sure you do your job. But you're the pastor. You're the one with the whip. No, I'm not. That's not what a pastor is. A pastor's job is not to knock you around. <laughs> it, I believe it is the pastor's job to be an example. I want to show you how you serve. Don't, don't, don't just do as I say, but, but do as I do. P Paul said, follow me as I do what? I've got a, I've got a, I've got some real estate right here. I've got to defend. There's so many examples, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna focus on one because I don't want to hold you very long. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 20. The Bible introduces us to a man. Verse one says, "Now there happened to be there a worthless man." That's not a good description to be given. His name was Sheba, the son of. Beechery, a Benjamite. He blew the trumpet and he said, We have no portion in David. We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. 
every man to his tents, O Israel. So the men of Israel withdrew from David, and they followed Sheba, the worthless man. But the men of Judah followed their king steadfastly from the Jordan to Jerusalem. <clears throat> Verse 6 tells us that David tells Abishai, now Sheba, the son of Betri, is going to do us more harm than even Absalom. Absalom just, just had just been recently killed right before this story took place. He said, take your Lord's servants and pursue him. Go after Sheba, lest he get himself to fortified cities and escape from us. See, Sheba understood the value of a wall. He knew that if he could get into the inside of a city's walls, then he could be safe. And from there, he could further his exploits. Isn't it interesting how the enemy understands the value of protection? But sometimes we, as the child of God, we live a life that's unprotected. We open doors to things that we have no business opening doors to. We basically, what I'm, what, what, what I'm saying is, we, we allow the wall in front of us to be tore down. The wall that's meant there to protect us and keep us safe. Amen. And, and, and to separate us from the things that are out there. But yet we'll willingly and voluntarily tear them down and allow. Bible says in verse 14, Meanwhile, Sheba traveled through the, all the tribes of Israel and eventually came to the town of Abel Beth Mechakah. I looked that word up before church, but I still forgot it. Abel Beth Mechah, something like that. All the members of his own clan, the Bichrites, <laughs> assembled for battle and they followed him into, into the town. He, he come to this town. Joab's forces came, and again, they're chasing after Sheba. And they came, and they started attacking the town that Sheba was in. They built a siege ramp. Everybody know what a siege ramp is? It's, it's a, it's, they'll take dirt, and they'll, they'll pile it up to where they can, they can walk up, basically, and cross over the wall. So here Joab's forces, this is David's forces, come in. They're getting ready to, to attack this city. And the Bible says in verse 16, there was a wise woman in the town. We don't know her name. But this wise woman standing on the wall, she calls out to Joab. She says, listen to me, Joab. Come over here so I can talk to you. Verse 20, what she says is, why are you attacking our city? Why are you coming against this city? We're, we're, we're godly people. And what, the, what Joab was telling us is, listen, You've got somebody in your city. His name is Sheba. We're not here to destroy your city. We're here to get Sheba out. She was not even aware that Sheba was in her city. Amen. Let me tell you, friend. Brethren, fathers, you are the priest of your home. Your job is to sit on the city gates on top of the wall. The Bible talks about the instructions that they would be given to, to, to govern the, the, the city gates is they would have to be there until the sun was hot. Amen. Until, amen, the time when the sun went down. They would, they would have to watch what was coming in, what was going out. They had that authority. You and I have a responsibility to our families to be aware of what's coming in and what's going out. Here they were not even aware that Sheba had made his way into their city. Amen. Do you think it would have been a good thing to allow Sheba to stay in the city? Do you think Sheba's intentions were good? Oh, no, no, no. Don't ever, ever forget the enemy's purpose is to only but for to steal, kill, and destroy. It is his purpose to walk about seeking whom he made about. There's never a good time to allow the enemy into your city. There's never a good time to compromise and say, well, I guess this one time will be okay. Don't ever do that because you're going to have a Joab that's going to come eventually and attack your city. Amen. Why are you attacking our city? We just want Sheba. The Bible says that Joab replied, believe me, I don't want to devour or destroy your town. That is not my purpose. All I want is a man named Sheba. Hallelujah. All right. The woman replied, notice what she said. We will throw his head over the wall to you. Don't you love the Bible? They go, 
she goes to the city leaders and she said, we got to find this man named Sheba. Because if we don't get Sheba out of our town, we're fixing to get destroyed. And finally, they found out where Sheba was. They cut his head off, and they tossed his head over the wall. Guess what Joab did? They left. Let me tell you, friend, it is very important that you and I defend the area that God has given us. Amen. I have a responsibility to my wife and to my children. And as a pastor, I have a responsibility to this congregation. And my message today is, it's to Sheba, to the Shebas that's out there, to those Shebas that are looking and trying to find a fortified city. My, my, my message to them is, not on my watch. You, you may have people in our nation that's wanting to tear down monuments and, and rewrite history and, and, and get a new version. No, no, no. Not on my watch. I'm still standing for those principles. I'm still standing for the things of, amen, that we were built on. And you've got those who will tell you, hey, you don't need to take that, you don't need to take this word that serious. Come on, just don't, don't, don't be so, let me tell you, not on my watch. And it's not because I want to be mean and, 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 and point my thing, but no, because I value what this book says. This book has, has made me who I am today. This book has, has helped me navigate through some horrible times in my life. Uh, this book has given me the liberty and the freedom that we sing about today. This book uh, to me means more than anything uh, and so I just got a message uh, for the enemy. Not on my watch. Uh, I'm going to stand here. Uh, I'm going to make sure the wall is built. Uh, I, I may not be able to control what everybody else does. But as Joshua said, he said, you know what, if you want to serve the gods on the other side, you go right ahead and do that. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I know there might be other options, but in my opinion, they ain't options. Amen. When Jesus looked at his disciples and said, hey, you're going to also go away? I don't know whether it was Philip or Peter. They said, Lord, where are we going to go? You got the words of eternal life. Amen. I understand that we got critics and we got people that oppose us and all. I'm not here to give them attention. I'm not here to try to prove how wrong they are. That's not my motivation. My motivation here is to defend what this book declares. My, my motivation is to take care of what God has given me. Amen. And to, and to let the enemy know that not on my watch. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to land. Amen. I preached them all today. Praise God. I was looking up the word or the name of Abishai who David turned to when Sheba made the statement that he made. And that word or the name Abishai, it means, it means a gift from God or a, a present. And, I, and I, thought of, I thought about that, but I didn't really write a whole lot down, but I thought about that and Man, there is never a better moment to stand for the things of God than right now. It truly is a gift. Amen. I, I, I haven't always been in this. Y'all know my story. I was raised in a, in a completely different denomination. Good people taught me how to love God, and I'm thankful for that. But about 20, oh goodness, almost 29 years ago now, when I got in, into Pentecost, I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. I joined all you crazy people. My first Pentecostal service, oh my goodness. And I remember, again, this is way back, and I'm not, man, I am not at all throwing stones, but, but I would come across a, a lot of debates. I'm not against them, I'm not necessarily for them. I don't always know what they... Now, I've learned a lot from them. I've, on YouTube, I've watched a bunch of them, and, and I've learned a lot. But I don't believe my job 
is to prove how people how wrong people are. That's not my job. Amen. But I do understand and I do believe that I need to know what this book says. Amen. My, my, my purpose may not be to prove somebody wrong, but I better know what I believe. And I better make sure that my feet are grounded. Because there is every wind of doctrine where Paul says being tossed to and fro. I'm telling you, there are so many different flavors. <laughs> Whatever you want to believe, there's somebody out there that says, hey, I believe that. I'll teach you that. I want to know what this book says. Because here's why, it, to me, it is so important that I have the understanding that I that God wants me to have. It's so is because <clears throat> when it comes to defending what I have, my family, which means more than nothing means more to me than my family, my children, my wife. Amen. And then the church. The church, you're not, you're not second. You're third. Amen. My, my responsibility, first of all, is to God, then my family, and then I want to serve you as a church. But if I really want to be effective and defend these, 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 what God has given me. I can't do it on my own. I don't have enough wisdom. I, I don't have the ability or the power, but it is in this book. And so my understanding of this book is going to empower me to be able to defend and help protect that which I value so much. Amen. It's so important that I have godly revelation. Amen. This morning, without question today, there's not a person here that has not felt the effects of the attack of the enemy in your life or your family. Amen. And I realize that there may be some parents here, your hearts are broken or Spouses here that, amen, you feel not complete. And a lot of that, you're, you're not able to, you can't control nobody. But let me tell you what you can do. Amen. Amen. I want to I wanna cherish what God has given me. And I just want to declare today that, devil, I may not be able to affect everybody. I, I, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to defend that which is right here. I'm going to... I know what, I, I, I can make a difference for myself. But then again, when, we, when God puts us together collectively, amen, we become a force to be reckoned with. As we stand here today, hallelujah. We're blessed, amen, to be recipients of such a wonderful gift. And we do have an obligation, a responsibility, amen. Praise God to live this life, amen, that will make a difference in those around us, that will make a difference in those, amen, which we rub shoulders with, and I believe can even have a, an effect upon people that we don't even know. The ripple effects of this relationship can be pretty amazing, amen. This morning, I want to invite you around this altar and find you a place for a few moments, amen, on this 5th of July, as we celebrate the freedom of our nation, but also the understanding of the, of the heritage that God has given us, the importance that we stand upon the Word of God. Can we this morning? Come on, church. Can we find a place? Let's reach out in the name of Jesus. Come on. We thank you today, oh God. You are so good. You are so good. Thank There's you. a lighthouse on a hillside that old
Praise God. Can we love him this morning? Can we thank the Lord today? Where would we be, hallelujah, if it wasn't for that?